Hey, everyone. It's been a while since I've seen you. Look, I have a little friend with me today. He's waving at you. Do you know what this animal is? Oh, he's a little shy. This animal is a groundhog. We have lots of groundhogs where you live in West Virginia. He's going to wave at you again. Oh, he's so shy. But he shouldn't be shy because today is Groundhog Day. And on Groundhog Day, it's a very special day, and we'll learn about it in just a second. Uh, I'm going to put our little groundhog over here while I share some stories with you. Well, actually, let's, I'll, I'll let him sit here with me while I tell you this. What is Groundhog Day? Groundhog Day is a festival in the United States and Canada. People believe an animal called a groundhog predicts the weather on Groundhog Day. They watch as the groundhog comes out of its hole after hibernating. We'll talk about that big word in just a minute. According to an old story, if the groundhog sees its shadow, winter will last for six more weeks. If the groundhog does not see his shadow, spring will begin soon. Groundhog Day was on February the 2nd. That's the day. Schools, post office, banks, government offices, and companies do not close on Groundhog's Day. But today, we're going to talk about the groundhog, and there's a big word in there called hibernate. Hibernate, that's a big fancy word that means some animals sleep all winter, and then they wake up when it's springtime. Uh, they'll eat and eat and eat until they get big and fat, and then they'll go to sleep, and then they'll wake up in the spring. Let's find out about a little bit more. Hi, Van. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Hi Everly. I'm glad, glad to see you guys come back to see, see me today. today. I'm going to set our groundhog over here while I, I share some more stories with you. Hi, Remy. Good to see everybody back. I know so many names now. Uh, so the, the, I'm going to share with you, we are talking about hibernating. Let's talk a little bit about the animals hibernating with a story that's called Too Sleepy. Turtle crawled in the meadow, a chilly autumn wind whistled in the trees. Leaves fluttered to the ground. They were yellow and orange and red and brown. Turtle meandered across the damp grass to a big rock where she found Snake looking for some earthworms to eat. Hello, Snake, said Turtle. Let's play hide and seek in the grass. Sorry, Turtle, not today, murmured Snake. I'm feeling very sleepy. And Snake slithered into his hole under the big rock and coiled around and around for his long winter's nap. Turtle scrambled over to the big hollow log where Bear was munching on grub. Hello, Bear, said Turtle. Let's go look for berries. Oh, it's too cold, Turtle, Bear growled. And I'm too sleepy. Bear squeezed herself into a hollow log tucked her paws in, tucked her, tucked her nose into her paws, and snuggled up for a long winter's sleep. Turtle trudged over the meadow to the cave where he found Bat. Bat was just returning from a night of scooping up insects to eat. Hello, Bat, called Turtle. Let's go see if the mice want to play. I don't fly in the daytime, Turtle, squeaked Bat. Besides, I'm so tired. <sighs> And the bat swooped into her cave and fastened her toes and wings hooked onto the rocky ceiling amongst her friends. Then she folded her wings around her like a blanket for a long winter's sleep. So Turtle clambered over to the old hollow tree where Raccoon was nibbling on a paw full of berries. Ah, don't bother me, Turtle, <coughs> snapped, uh, snapped the raccoon. I'm feeling very sleepy today. And before Turtle could say a word, Raccoon climbed up the tree, crawled inside a hollow branch, and nestled down in a bed of leaves for a long winter's sleep. Turtle plodded to the edge of the pond, and there was... Ribbit. Ribbit. Frog. Catching insects with his long, sticky tongue. Hello, Frog, said Turtle. You want to play leapfrog, or are you feeling too sleepy? How did you know, croaked Frog, and with that he buried himself deep in the mud at the edge of the pond for his long winter's sleep. Turtle yawned. Oh, come to think of it, I'm feeling rather sleepy myself, she sighed. I guess I'll see my friends in the spring. 
turtle plopped into the pond. She swam to the bottom of the pond and buried deep into the soft, cozy mud. Turtle was ready for her long winter's sleep. So some animals, like a bear and the groundhog and the frogs, they don't like the cold, so they hibernate. It's a fancy word, big fancy word that means they sleep all winter, hibernate. And then our friend the groundhog, let's find out a little bit about our groundhog. Everybody else can keep, keep saying hi to. Hello, Edgemont Head Start. I miss you guys. I'll come see you as soon as I can. One of these days I'll come and bring some stories for you. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Luciella. Thank you guys for coming today. So let's find out about the groundhog. What, what is Groundhog Day? Will the groundhog see his shadow this year? People all over the country celebrate Groundhog's Day on February 2nd. That's today. Groundhog Day takes place near the end of winter. When, when will winter end and when will spring begin? On Groundhog Day, you might find out the answer. Groundhogs are small, furry animals. They are also called woodchucks. Groundhogs live in burrows. Burrows are tunnels they dig in the ground. They rest in the burrows all winter and come out in the spring. In the little town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, there is one special groundhog. His name is Punxsutawney Phil. Can Phil tell if there will be six more weeks of winter? On Groundhog Day, people come to Gobbler's Hill. They wait for Phil to come out of a hole. Will Phil see his shadow? If it is sunny, there will be a shadow. People say that if Phil sees his shadow, winter will last for six more weeks. If it is cloudy, there will not be a shadow. And people say if Phil does not see his shadow, spring will come early. Sometimes the groundhog is right. Sometimes he is wrong. People still celebrate Groundhog Day because it is fun. People started celebrating this day in Europe in the 1600s. In Europe, they used hedgehogs to tell what the weather would be. Look how cute. Groundhog Day was started in 1887 by an editor and a congressman in Pennsylvania. The little town of Punxsutawney became known as the weather capital of the world. Phil is on the news the day of the celebration. Everyone in the country can see him. Hundreds of people now come to Punxsutawney to celebrate Groundhog Day. Phil lives in a special home with two other groundhogs. It's in the Punxsutawney Public Library. Can you imagine if we had groundhogs here in our library? Groundhog Day is fun. Will Punxsutawney Phil predict when spring will come this year? So in our story, we did learn a little bit about Groundhog Day. And our story is, if the groundhog comes out of his hole and he sees his shadow, he'll get scared and he'll go back in and he'll sleep for six more weeks. But if he comes out and he does not see his shadow, yay, that means spring will be here early. Now, also in our story, I mentioned a place Let's see, Ray. I'll find a picture of it here. This is Pennsylvania. This is a state. This is West Virginia. That's right, where you live. You live about right here. And Punxsutawney is right here. It's really not that too far of a drive. It's about three or four hours, I believe. And guess what? I visited there once, not on Groundhog Day, but I went another time, and it's, it's, it's Groundhog Day all year long there. Uh, they celebrate with everything, but I want to share with you what I found when I went to Groundhog, or Punxsutawney. Do you remember where the groundhogs sleep? 
That's right. They stay in a special place called Phil's Burrow, which is outside of the public library. And there he is asleep. And they go to a place called Gobbler's. It says Gobbler's Knob here in the book. Is it Gobbler's Hill? And they wait for Phil to come out of this little door. And if he does, he sees his shadow, he'll get scared and go back in. And it means six more weeks of winter. But if he does not see his shadow, it means spring will come early. They also have some fun with their Groundhog Day celebrations. Did you notice in this picture there was a big groundhog dressed up in a tuxedo? They had them all over the town, and you can go around and find them. Like you could find one at the post office. You could find one at the hardware store. You could even find one at McDonald's. Everybody celebrates the groundhog in Tonsutani. And there's just another picture of where his, what his home looks like when he's not doing Groundhog Day. Do we have anybody else saying hi not yet? Okay. If anybody would like to go ahead and say hello, you can send in your names and I'll say hello to everybody. I'm so glad everybody's sticking with us today. Uh, I have another story I want to share with you about groundhogs predicting the weather. This groundhog, his name is Jeffrey Groundhog. Jeffrey Groundhog predicts the weather. One morning, after a long winter snap, Jeffrey Groundhog popped out of his burrow to look for his shadow. It was February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Jeffrey remembered what his mother had told him. If you see your shadow on Groundhog Day, go back to sleep because winter will last for six more weeks. If there is no shadow, spring will soon be here. Jeffrey hurried into town to tell the newspaper that he had not seen his shadow. So, uh, no shadows and spring is almost here. Is that it? asked Merton the Moose. And, and the story ran in the afternoon's Daily Gazette. Groundhog says, no shadow, spring has sprung. Within a few days, the weather turned warm and the snow melted and the ground thawed. Spring had truly sprung. Ah, predicting the weather is easy, said Jeffrey. The following winter, Jeffrey dozed snug as a bug, dreaming groundhog dreams in his warm nest at the bottom of his burrow. Toward the end of January, folks started looking for clues to what Jeffrey might say. Burton the Moose says, No, Mrs. Hen, you'll have to wait until February 2nd for Jeffrey's forecast. Yes, Mrs. Mr. Duck, we'll let everyone know if Jeffrey sees his shadow. As Groundhog Day drew near, television cameras and lights were moved into place around Jeffrey's burrow this year. Everyone would be able to watch the biggest groundhoggiest day ever. Look, his picture's all over the place, everywhere in the town. Jeffrey's handsome picture had been popping up all over town. For toothpaste, on the side of a bus. Bright and early on Groundhog Day, everyone waited for Jeffrey. Anybody seen the Groundhog? Hello, Jeffrey, where's the Groundhog? One hour passed, two hours passed. Three hours passed. Jeffrey! Hello, Jeffrey called Merton. Are you home? Oh, no! I overslept, groaned Jeffrey. He flew out of his bed and dashed to his door and made his appearance. He looks like a movie star, doesn't he? Jeffrey! Jeffrey called Merton. What did you see? Was there a shadow? Well, I don't know, cried Jeffrey. With all the cameras and the lights and everybody crowded around me, I could hardly see the ground in front of me, let alone my shadow. The newspaper said, Groundhog doesn't have a clue. I don't know what I saw. Was there a shadow? Weather picture muddled. Now, things were really up in the air weather-wise. Nobody knew whether to bring out their golf clubs or the snow shovel. No one knew whether to wax the skis or their surfboard. 
and no one had a clue whether to plug in the electric fan or the electric blanket. All the weather reports were canceled. Jeffrey, this is causing major problems, muttered Merton. We need your prediction now. Oh, all right, moaned Jeffrey. I'll have my answer this afternoon. The newspaper says, extra. Jeffrey says, winter, six more weeks. It's official. Put spring wear in the mothballs. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. So, Jeffrey, how could you predict the winter would last for six more weeks? Asked Rebecca Raccoon. No one else was really certain if there was a shadow or not. Did you guess? Um, no, said Jeffrey. Uh, did you make a study of how weather works? Asked Sunny the Squirrel. No, said Jeffrey. To be honest, I called my mom. On ground all day, she always looks for her shadow, too. Woo, sighed Jeffrey. Predicting the weather is very tiring. I better get back to my nest for a nap. And that is exactly what he did. So those are our stories for the first story time of this year for 2021. You can join me next week and we're going to talk about a heart-shaped holiday. Valentine's Day, that's right. And you can join me here at about 11 o'clock. Uh, Miss Julie can't join us today, so I'll be teaching you the craft today. So about, about 15, 20 minutes from now, you'll see me again. Hi, Ariel. Hi, Delaney. Thanks for joining us today. So until then, my groundhog's going to give you a wave. Oh, it'd be a little bashful. And I'm going to put him back down here to say thank you for being good listeners today. Thank you for letting me share these stories with you. But most of all, today and always, thank you so much for letting me spend this time with you today. Have a great day, and I'll see you next week.